Hi, this is Julie Venners with another Lupus Foundation of America research update. The big lupus news out of the recent American College of Rheumatology annual scientific meeting was encouraging data from two large clinical studies of belimumab, brand name Venlista, a potential new treatment for lupus being developed by Human Genome Sciences in partnership with GlaxoSmithKline. Last July, HGS and GSK released positive data from BLISS-52, a year-long phase three clinical study involving more than 800 patients with lupus, primarily from Asia, South America, and Eastern Europe. Dr. Sandra Navarra, head of rheumatology at the University of Santo Tomas, Manila, the Philippines, was the principal investigator of the study and provided additional data during the ACR meeting in Philadelphia is that the Benlista was able to reduce flares, was able to uh, significantly also reduce fatigue. And I think more important than anything else for man many patients with lupus is that it was able to reduce steroid dose. The adverse events were uh, similar and well balanced so throughout the all treatment arms. Uh, th these patients were all be able to reduce their disease activity, which was uh, an endpoint, uh, plus the fact that they did not worsen throughout the study when they were receiving belimumab over the placebo arm. Data also was presented from a long-term phase two continuation trial of Benlista, which showed sustained improvement in disease activity among lupus patients over four years. Dr. Michelle Petrie, director of the Lupus Center at Johns Hopkins Medical Institute, presented the data. The news for the phase two open label continuation is all good. There were no safety problems with long-term use, so no problems with cancer or very rare but terrible infections. In addition, it's all good news in terms of long-term efficacy. The longer patients are on this biologic, the lower the autoantibodies like anti-DNA, anti-RNP, and anti-SMIT. In addition, severe flares virtually go away. Benlista potentially represents the first new drug to be approved for lupus in more than 50 years, and the first drug ever developed specifically for lupus. Data also was presented on the use of mycophenolate mofetel, or Celsept, for use in certain symptoms in patients with lupus. While a 2007 trial of CELSEP did not reach its primary endpoint of showing superiority to standard care in lupus kidney disease, several studies have shown CELSEP to be beneficial for treating various manifestations of lupus. Dr. Joan Merrill, head of the Clinical Pharmacological Research Program at the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation and also medical director of the Lupus Foundation of America, presented data from a successful six-month placebo-controlled trial of CELSEPT for treating arthritis in patients with systemic lupus. Patients agreed to withdraw their background medicines when they entered the trial. Now, it wasn't quite as scary as that might sound because everybody got a dose of steroid up front. But then we waited for the steroid to wear off, and then we saw who flared up again. And that trial design worked very well. In fact, it was able to meet its primary outcome and show a statistically significant difference between mycophenolate, or Celsept, and placebo, and showed that in not all patients, but in enough patients to maybe make it worth doing a bigger trial, uh, that Celsept does help lupus arthritis. Several clinical trials of CELSEP for use in lupus are either underway or recruiting patients. The LFA will continue to report on the results of these studies. Rituxan is another drug that has been studied as a possible treatment for lupus. Rituxan is approved for use in rheumatoid arthritis and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and two companies, Genentech and Biogen Idic, conducted clinical trials of Rituxan for treating lupus and lupus kidney disease. The trials were named Lunar and Explore. Dr. Richard Fury, director of the Novel Therapeutics Program at the North Shore University Hospital in Long Island, New York, presented data from a study of 144 patients with lupus nephritis. While the study failed to meet the primary endpoint in the lupus nephritis trial, Dr. Fury said rituxan has shown clinical benefit in other studies. So the interesting thing about rituximab, we know that B cells are important in lupus and to target a B cell, which is what rituximab does, it just deletes that particular cell from at least the peripheral blood, if not the tissues as well. 
So it's sound biology. But so far we've had two formal studies that failed to reach their endpoints. But there have been a lot of open label studies that have been successful and there have been a lot of off label use. So experience tells us that there are patients who do respond. While the Rituxan Explorer and Lunar trials did not meet their endpoints, data from these studies have been helpful. Dr. Kevin Latinus, clinical assistant professor with the Kansas University Medical Center, has used data from the Explorer trial in an attempt to identify markers that might help determine a lupus patient's risk for serious infections. We know from previous decades ago work that patients have low CD4 counts. Anywhere from 16 to 25 percent of patients in this study had, low, had CD4 counts less than 200 um, during the 52 weeks of these trials. Yet again, it didn't correlate with whether they were going to get a serious infection or not. And that's reassuring. Nonetheless, I don't think we should put this in the books as a closed story. I think we need to continue to examine uh, this kind of phenomenon and maybe work with some of the other clinical trials that are being done and prospectively ask whether this um, or other factors are better markers for infectious risk. Dr. Joan Merrill also took a retrospective look at data from the Rituxan Explorer trial to see how future trials of potential lupus drugs might be improved. You can learn a lot from clinical trials by going back over them and asking questions about um, what kinds of flares patients have, how often they have them, and maybe if you could think about whether there would be a more sensitive way of measuring outcomes for future clinical trials. And so this project is really about that. It defines um, severe flares, um, very severe flares, and uh, mild or moderate flares, and it looks at the different outcomes that you get in this clinical trial when you split the flares up into those different kind of categories. And so the outcome that seems to be the most sensitive, in other words, more likely to show a difference between different groups of patients is when you measure the severe flares. It's important to remember that at the present time, there are some 30 clinical studies now underway of potential new treatments for lupus. Hope is on the horizon for a better quality of life for people with lupus, thanks to the dedicated efforts of medical researchers, clinicians, and industry leaders who are working tirelessly to develop the full arsenal of treatments that lupus requires. For information about participating in a lupus clinical trial, visit the LFA Center for Clinical Trial Education website at www.lupus.org forward slash clinical trials. Thanks for watching this lupus research update, and we look forward to bringing you additional news from the annual scientific meeting of the American College of Rheumatology.